Do you like monsters? Do you like Dungeons and Dragons? Do you like monsters and Dungeons and Dragons? Then do we have a show for you. Kill Every Monster is a bi-weekly DM deep dive into every monster in the manual. The first part is a discussion about creature mechanics and lore, and the second half is a one-shot AP where the guest takes on the role of the monster. Each episode of Kill Every Monster is a contained story, so you never have to worry about being caught up or listening out of order. Pick any monster you like and jump right in. For a Dryad episode, Emily Booza talked about how these tree ladies are really just grown-up fairies. Like that concept of there are fairies that are specifically assigned to a flower, like stuck in my head as a kid. And I really remember really loving those. And I feel like the dryad can be kind of, again, it's a grown up fairy. It's the grown up <laughs> version of that concept of just, you know, you're too big for just a flower. You need a whole tree. I like this accidental idea of almost the hermit crab dryad mentality of like, well, I was born, I had a dandelion. And then all the wisps blew away and I had to move. Uh, so I lived in a rose bush for a while. And then there was an apple tree growing nearby. And that was really nice. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I want, a, I want a children's book of that concept. I want a children's book of that concept now, please. <laughs> Universe. To find out more about the show and where you can listen, head on over to killeverymonster.com. And we'll see you next time for Kill, Kill Every, Every Monster. Monster. <laughs> Hey people, this is Aram. Welcome back to God's Fall, a proud member of Neon Rival. Join the collective at neonrival.com. Episode 68, The City of Gold. When we last saw our heroes, they had learned about Caitlin's dream space. She had created the form of a treehouse, allowing a godling to join her in a virtual world where they could test their abilities against any foe the god of dreams could imagine. Rena was eager to try it out, and asked Caitlyn to conjure up a fight between her and Tiago Reese. The battle was fierce, but the god of sport closed the distance with trickery, forcing Rena to fight hand to hand. She held her own, but Tiago proved near unbeatable in a close fight and sent Rena gasping into consciousness. The party's boat, a living ironwood vessel empowered with the soul of the Treant King Steelbeard, slid silently through the night as they headed towards Capania, the golden capital city of Rizan. They were in search of the arisen god of the astral realm, though hesitant to enter a city which would surely be awash with Kadarian soldiers. My name is Doug, and I play Doro Knot, the level 6 halfling rogue. My name is Kelly, and I play Rena Falaval, a 6th level wild elf ranger. My name is Michael. I play Zion Preeton, a 6th level human sorcerer. My name is Carlos. I play Para Rivers, a 6th level human cleric. Like, right when the first rays of the sun start to hit, I imagine Para starts to wake up. His, he cycles with the sun. So his eyes flutter open, and he, like, looks over at Zion, who's, like, still sleeping. Para in the morning is way different than Para at night. So Para in the morning is, like, new energy, really excited. Like, today is the day. Every morning he wakes up, today is the day. And his eyes get, like, real bright as he's looking at Zion. And he starts whispering because he doesn't want to wake uh, Doro up. Psst. Squish. Squish. Are you awake? 
No. Okay, okay. So, um, how how long do you think is it gonna be a long t- a long time? Okay, I'm I'm just gonna go back to sleep too. But you can wake up if you want. If you want if you want to wake up, that's fine. You're very handsome. I just want to say that. That's it. Like if we were in a bar, I'd like I'd like hit on you. Probably. I don't know. Go back to sleep. What? No, nothing. Hey, no, nothing. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sleepy. It's no, you look day. so cute when you sleep. Well, so do you. Do I? Yeah. Okay. You look much cuter when you're asleep. Oh. <laughs> you are a crab apple, first of all. <laughs> I'm not a morning That's person. That's a loud door. Please. Uh... Am I awake for this? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, like, it, if I... If I, like, saw you, if I, like, you know, I'd hit on you. I would hope so. What would you say? No, what would you say? What would you say? Tell me. And he's, like, in his arms right now. <laughs> he's like, what would you say? What do you mean, what would I say? Like, you saw me. How, wh- like, what would you say? I'd say, hi. <sighs> That's it? That's all you would say? What else am I supposed to say? You know what I'd say? What would you say? Okay, you gotta be real serious. And he like turns around, and now they're f- they're facing each other. You gotta take it serious, okay? So just like pretend like you're at a bar having a drink. And you're not paying attention. Um, first of all, that would never happen. But just just pretend. Um, I'll pretend I'm Torvik. Hey, you know, my divinity comes from the sun, but you're the only sunshine here. <laughs> that would good. That would work. Don't laugh. Shh, don't oh, laugh. Babe, I'm sorry. I'm oh sorry. man, Para, no, that dude. was terrible. What? Doro, you're not supposed to listen. Terrible. That was a good line. That was really bad. Dude. He's my sunshine. It totally works. No, I... you couldn't resist me. You know. And now Para's like getting up, and now he's putting on his sandals. That was a great line. Well, I get up and I walk over to the wash bin. Is that seawater? No, actually, he can filter it, so that's fresh water. Paris sees this, walks over to the corner. A shower forms around him. What is Para doing? Are you okay, Para? Why are you in there? I'm just showering, guys. He's doing something we've asked Torvik to do many times. But I thought that was bathing. Don't you just sit in the water? What is that thing? It's like a waterfall. It's like a rain. Those are two different things. It's water falling, so it's kind of the same thing. And he's like still showering, and he's humming to himself. You guys are sailing south along the coast of Rizan? Probably on the top part of the ship, because I don't like being on boats, so I want to be able to see where I am. So I'm probably like up near the back. I would like to go to some place on Treebeard where he's congregating his consciousness. Okay, so there's like this one giant mast. It's literally a tree growing out of the deck, and Treebeard's face is in that mast. And it can like turn and look at you and that kind of thing. Hi, Steelbeard. Hello, Doro. I have a question. I want to draw something on you. And I couldn't help but notice that you, like, change shape and stuff. Will it still be there if you change into something else? It may change as well. What if I told you not to change this thing I'm going to put on you? I can preserve it. What do you wish to draw upon me, Doro? It's actually a trick I learned. I've actually been reading a bunch of Zion's books, and I want to try something. How are you making it? Because it has to be inlaid with silver. Uh, Looks like we're going to have to go shopping. Honestly, I was just going to use chalk. You could start carving it and then inlay it later. These scrolls I've been reading that Zion's been hiding in his quarters that he thinks I don't know are there, but I found last night. They say a bunch of stuff about the stuff I can do, like moving through the astral and points of reference and things like that. Lots of confusing junk. But mostly, I couldn't help but notice this one diagram. For some reason, this makes, like, complete sense to me. So what I'm going to do... Okay, and I plot over to where I'm going to put it, right? And I take out my dagger of Bessa, and I flip it around, and I kind of stab into the deck. 
Oh, ow, oh, hold, my no, friend. No, no, it's, it's okay. Hang on. As you start to stab the second time, the deck is literally like opening and moving out of the way. <laughs> I, so every wait, time you stab, no, you just no, wait. miss it. So I try and grab like, like pieces of the deck to try and hold, hold it together, but it just keeps like yeah. moving apart. No, wait. Hold, no, I, I'm my gonna, friend. No, look. Show me that image again. Oh, okay. And then teleports to the map. And I unfurl the scroll. See? So Steelberg like focuses and his furrowed brow kind of stares really hard at it and he leans back for a sec and he closes his eyes and the deck around you begins to rumble and shift and change and the circle simply rises out of it and is now part of the deck all carved in. Ha 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 ha. Excellent. So I go over and I stand in the middle of the circle. Can I feel the funneling of astral through it? Imagine if you had a really poor connection. It's this rush of static, but through the static, you can feel all these little passageways that are already established all over the world. It fades and comes and you can't really link to it. And then as you're looking at the scroll, you're noticing that these are all inlaid with silver. Yes, I can feel it. I can feel my power grow. I would ask Torvik, but... He's drunk. Uh, drunk and asleep again. Can't you, like, fix this? I say to this ship. There's nothing more I can do, Doro. I cannot produce silver on demand, only wood. Silver? And I unfurl the scroll again, and like, I'm reading it for real now, but real slow. Oh, right. That's silver. That word says silver. Okay. Oh, I need silver. And you don't have any silver? I have no silver, Doro. I cannot okay. make minerals. All right. I'm going to look for silver. And I start teleporting the sh- around the ship for the rest of the time until we land, looking for silver that's not there. I just, like, saw all of this down from, like, go down from the back of the boat. I'm like, I'm not even going to question it. I'm just going to... I'm going to keep drawing. So as Doro is going up the stairs, <laughs> uh, Zion is going down the stairs to talk to Steelbeard. Hello, Zion. Hello, Steelbeard. How are things? Things are well. Water is warm. How do you like being a boat? It's interesting. It's not a lot like being a tree. It's not a lot like being a lot of things. I suspect it's interesting moving a lot. Well, if I can't have my legs, at least I've got my sea legs. (laughs) (laughs) So we're about to come upon this uh, human settlement known as Capenia. Yes, the golden city of the east. Oh, so a lot of lore comes its way to to the Ironwood, does it? I lived for many hundreds of years, Zion. I have heard many tales. As you know, then, the uh, golden city of Capenia is uh, filled with a lot of people, including some Kadarians. More than likely. They have ways of tracking us, and if they were to find us at this time, it could be rather, shall we say, a difficult situation for all of us concerned. Fortunately, Capenia is not Kadar. It is a grand city of magic. There are many things inside it that could cloak. Even five godlings. It'll be harder for them to locate you. I imagine they'd have to be rather close. Has Zion ever been to Capenia? Your dad certainly has been. When you were really young, your dad took you on like your first trip because he had to go to Capenia for some shit, whatever he had to do. You remember it being this just golden city. They have so much gold, they leaf their buildings with it. There's a giant bazaar off the port when there's markets with every possible item and texture and material you could buy. Any raw material, any crafted thing, everything is for sale in this market. Well, Steelbeard, here's something that I'd like for us to try, if you're willing to help. I am willing to do whatever you need, my friend. You're a bit conspicuous as a ship at times. I mean, you have a face. They could see me for miles. (laughs) Well, so I was thinking perhaps it might be best for us to be less conspicuous by you attempting to transform yourself into something else. You said you could do that, yes? I can. I believe we're on the same page, my friend. Well, so here's my thought. We have a number of items that we don't want to get wet. So I was hoping that maybe there would be a space you could make of yourself that would be a watertight sort of box. I can make many spaces. I can form into whatever shape you need that could be formed from wood. Well, I doubt you've ever seen a dock in your life. 
I know what a dock is, Zion. When I was the king of the treants, I spoke with them all. I saw all corners of our land. I see all things made of wood. Wood, even when cut down, still sings to me a little. I can make this dock you speak of. Call everyone to the deck. Call them all now. Dude, don't question it. Just do what the tree says. Doro, come back up here. Hey, hey, Rena. Oh, uh, stay right there. Still here has something to tell us. All right, well, well I bang at Torvik's sword. Torvik! And Oinkers walks out and <laughs> looks back in for a little bit, looks a little concerned and nuzzles the door shut and then looks at you and this, if a pig could shrug, the pig shrugs and like waddles along behind you. Okay, I open the door and look in. <laughs> Torvik is... J- Normally he's pretty disheveled. Now it's just like he's got one arm over his face. Drool is just oozing down his chest, and he's soaked half the mattress as well. He's got one sock on, one sock off. The, he still has like the the uh, gorget of his wooden armor around his neck. He's got tools, and there's grease, and he's got like a bunch of chain stuff all over the floor. And there is just this heavy reek of sweat and alcohol and he is snoring heavily and caitlin comes walking up kind of bleary eyed and like this little sleep shirt rubbing her eyes i don't think he's getting up doro he doesn't look too well his dreams are sad i'll stay here and look after him though you go ahead don't worry he'll be fine and then caitlin just sits down next to him holds his hand and i guess he'll be fine all right, well, I go up into the deck and, uh, and join my friends. Gather in the center, single file, and hold on tight. I go to the back of the line. I step out of line. The deck, like, gently nudges, like, it kind of rises in a ripple and gently nudges just you back slide in. slide into place. Nuts. Is everyone ready? Ready! The sails fold into the mast and then down and the leaves kind of wrap around until they form into it and the entire mass just sinks right through the deck and at the same time the fore and aft castles sink into the deck until it's just a flat level surface maybe two or three feet off the ground with railings all the way around it then it begins to narrow and narrow and narrow until it's only 10 feet wide around you and you're in this impossibly long canoe. Then the edges fall away and it's just like this flat plank of wood as you're sliding around the cape and Capena rises from beyond it. This golden glowing city of torches, brazers, there must be a hundred ships in the harbor and several Kadarian vessels are very clear. You are just this plank of wood and as you approach land on the far, far right of Capena, just a little outside the view of everyone else, it starts to rise out of the water as pylons form underneath it and you kind of hydroplane and just touch the shore very gently, and you're on a dock. You hear a snort behind you, and you see that Torvik has been pulled out of the guts of the ship and is now just lying on the deck, snoring heavily behind you. Wankers, can you watch after Torvik? Wankers turns and (sighs) nods. Hey, look, guys, Kadarian vessels. Should I create some distractions? Doro! What? I just, I mean... No, they're, they're right we're here there. to be quiet. We just got here. I know, but but they're right there. I'll just be right back. No, wait, 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 Doro! Last time you were right back, we I was on top of rooftops. So you're safer now. As you guys are speaking, there's this noise behind you as Steelbeard completely reshuffles the deck and forms like... Like a shed pops up, one of those small wooden ones that would be on the side of a deck, and it kind of forms around Torvik. And then a little bed rises up, and leaves form under his head. And Oinkers just kind of looks at you, kind of forlornly, and slowly and quietly closes the door as she goes to watch over Torvik. 
I go and like leave her some snackage. Just a snout pops out and grabs the apple from your hand and munch, 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 munch. <laughs> okay, well, there's a number of things we need, but I don't have any money. Anybody have any money? I have money. I don't speak up now that she said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like pull out my pouch and I have 70 gold. Okay, so what does everybody need? I know that I need a little bit more copper wiring. I know that we, well, uh, first of all, we came here for a reason, right? We did? Yeah, there's another godling here. Yeah. There is. The god, uh, goddess of the astral realm? The god of the astral realm. The vision you saw was an old blind dwarf in the marketplace, like with a little stand in front of her, and she had various in- intricately carved wooden items and pottery. Who that wants she was to selling. see me do another trick? I swear it's nothing with the Kadarians. It's to help us find this godling. Well, why don't you explain it first? Uh, no, I think I'll just do it! And I touch the ground uh, to find the path between me and that godling that I remember. Doro slams his hand on the ground and his eyes roll over into that purple and pink glow. And in your mind, Doro, you see this like line burst out from the dock and then zip into the center of the market and spider and just go off in several different ways, but they all kind of fade out. And then boom, it sucks back into you. Ha, what? This has never done that before. You saw several different things. It jumped in and out. It like, you feel like almost like it, like it was crossing over how you teleport, but the lines wouldn't connect and, so she's here. It's a little hard to pin her down, though. She's kind of everywhere. Well, isn't this a city? Isn't this your, your place? Not this one. I mean, it will be soon. <laughs> uh, but for right now, no, I, I don't. I mean, I speak, I speak many lingos. Uh, but the truth is, yeah, no, I can. I mean, I could do some information gathering, but n- no more than any of the rest of us could do, really. I think we should split up and go on our own adventures. And I start teleporting to the marketplace. Doro! Steelbeard just raises a wall in front of you, and it was like, hang on, my friend. <laughs> right into it, then. <laughs> Ow! And then one of the pylons turns at its Steelbeard's face. As willing as I am, and as understanding as I am of your excitement, my friend, this city is swarming with Kadarians. Are you sure you want to go it alone? They're everywhere, really? I think the first thing we should do is get a change of clothes. What is everyone doing and where are you going? I guess we're going to go to the market and buy some clothes and stuff. Who's we? Rena, Para, and I, I guess. So Doral's going off on his own and Rena, Para, and Zion are going to go together. And we're like on the far side, but can we see the Kadarian ships from where we are? Oh, absolutely you can. Watch what patterns are going on. Like, for the dock. Like, what's the security for the dock? Or, what? like, who's going on and off Kadarian ships? I would like to loan her my spyglass while this happens. You're doing that spying thing again, aren't you? Here, wait. And I rustle through my junk, and I pull out Baron Lafleur's spyglass. And I say, here, take this. It's valuable. I want it back so I can rub it in his face. Okay, so you're at the window with the spyglass, trying to be real sneaky and everything. And after a second, Oinkers comes up and puts little hoofs up on the window next to you. And she's like looking out really carefully too. And then she shakes her head and she turns to you. And if a pig could could give you, I'll be right back. That's what the pig gives you. And (laughs) boom, she turns into a sparrow and flies out the window. Uh Uh-oh, where are you going? She's gone. She's already, she's already gone. I would like you to roll three perception rolls. So 10, 21, 27. There's a lot going on. There's ships and soldiers. And you start noticing that there's just Kadarian soldiers kind of everywhere. They're walking around. You're starting to focus in different areas. And then you notice one of the Kadarian vessels is definitely made of ironwood. It's got that bluish green hue to it. It's bigger than the other ship. So... That's got to be an important ship there. And after, and you watch it for a while, and you watch a lot of uh, soldiers and definitely anti theot priests coming up and down that plank. So there's some important people on that ship. You just, like, as you're scanning left to right, you see a little flash of something familiar, and you kind of come back, and you're searching, and then you spot it, 
and there's a wanted poster with Zion's face on it. Is there any way for me to see what it's coming from? Like on, can I see it all the like print on it? With a 31, sure. Why the hell? So it's it's like Zion's face drawn uh, from the front and then drawn again in in profile. It's not even close. It's exactly what he looks like. Someone who knows what Zion looks like had this commissioned. And below it, it says, wanted Zion Praetine. Enemy of the Republic. Reward 1,000 gold for his capture. This is definitely a Kadarian notice. It's, 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 it's got Kadarian symbology on it. It's written in their, you know, arrogant fucking tone. It's definitely a Kadarian. Um, are we going to wake up Torvik? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I go over to Torvik and I push him. I would like you to roll a dexterity save. It's like that scene in Breaking Bad. Where he sees the girl who's like choked on her own vomit. Twelve. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be enough. Torvik vomits all over you. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> what is that? Your first time trying to wake up Torvik? Well, now I definitely need some new clothes. Okay, I, we'll, I go over to Paris shower. <laughs> Get rid of some of that vomit. What? This again? Oh, I guess it's my turn to wake him up. Paris' eyes get real wide. <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> well, I've been the one waking him up this whole time, and this is how I've always done it. And I go over and I stand on Torvik, and I say, over there! And I teleport us above the water, so we fall in it. Oh, wow. Frothing of water, and now an alligator with a beard has appeared out of the water, <laughs> snapping and roaring and roiling, and it roils around you for a second, and you pop out to get free from it, and then ah! it sinks back under the water, and there's like blub, 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 blub. <gasps> oh no, I've killed Torvik! A moment later, a snake with a beard crawls up the side, crawls in through the window of the shack, goes into the middle of the bed, por- forms a perfect, like, little tight spiral with its little head, with its little bearded head lying on top. And then a tiny little a snake is like... Well, clearly Torvik needs to sleep this one off. Yeah, weird. That usually works. Oh, well, he can guard the dock. Let's go, everybody! Yeah, so, um, you're wanted. What? Wanted? I high-five Zion. Yeah, we're like criminal brothers now! Yeah, you have like a really detailed poster. Where? Points over there. The second you start to point, there's a fluttering of wings and a little sparrow lands on your shoulder with one of the posters in its beak. Thanks, Oinkers. Oh, it looks like this. Good job, Oinkers. (gasps) I get mine out. Look! We both have one. We should start a criminal empire. <laughs> <laughs> they were offering 100 gold for Doral. They're offering 1,000 gold for Zion. Uh, I'm tempted to turn myself in. Shit. I know, right. Wait a minute. Seriously? I'm only worth 100 gold? That's what your poster says. It only says 100 gold. Baron LaFleur hasn't put out any feelers <laughs> at all. Like, I know that ship was more, Sorry, more than 100 Doro, gold. but I'm winning. You got that poster months ago. It's not, it's, it's, it's not an LED screen. It doesn't update. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is unacceptable. I start setting fire to Companion. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my infamy? Are you kidding? Torvik's asleep and there's a fire roaring around. <laughs> <laughs> Doral just angrily grabs a quill away from Rita and draws two more zeros. There. Now we're technically even for right this moment. I'm going to try something new, guys. And I'm going to come with you to the uh, the market. There's a number of things that I need, though. Here, let me write this down. I, I hand my little list over to Rena and say, these are the things that I need, if you can. And now I'm grocery shopping. I'll be with you, but hopefully, if everything goes right, you can't see me. Home. He just vanishes. What? Ah, wait a minute. That's my job. Rena, uh, Dora, and Babe, you all just like walk in like a like a, a chevron, and I'll like stand behind you. Who's talking? Who is that? I'm invisible. <gasps> and I teleport further up the dock. Stop! There's a ghost here. <laughs> <laughs> Not a ghost, Dora. It knows my name. You also sound a lot like Zion. Even Oinkers rolls her eyes at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, the bit's over. (laughs) 
So do do we do we all do we all need clo- we all need clothes? Yes. Yeah. So am I going out? Are we all going out as is then? It's travelers. Yeah, I have a cloak. I already have a cloak, so I'm just gonna keep my cloak up. I mean, nobody's looking for you. Nobody's looking for her. I mean, well, there are a few people, but they won't be here. Are people in cloaks like already? This is a very. I mean, there's all sorts of people. Diverse. There's all sorts okay. of races. It's incredibly diverse. It's incredibly di- diverse in clothing style. Yeah, I mean, it could be. You could easily blend in here. Okay. Yeah. So you all walk down your dock, you join the main boardwalk, and you start walking around this rocky coast that opens up into the city proper. Again, the city is this wide open area that is just nestled between these two rocky coasts and it forms this huge inner bay and it's called the golden bay because little flecks of gold are basically embedded in everything there's so much gold in these hills and the sunlight catches it sparkling through the water so it gives the bay this golden kind of glow when the light's hitting it directly and you're walking along and it just kind of opens up into this huge bazaar and there are Uh, people just with rugs out there are people with tents out there are people with kind of wooden shacks and as you go they get fancier and fancier and fancier and they're brightly painted or some people have like full awnings and little tables set out if they're selling food and, and it just gets more and more detailed and intricate and more populated as you go in It is loud, the sense of the wharf and cooking and armories and smoke and raw wood being worked and potter's wheels. It's a concophony of sights and smells and sounds. Um, I remember, you know, Zion was wanted, but I was also just kind of watching patrols and I like mentioned like stuff about the patrols and then I go, and then there was this ship, it was made of ironwood, which was kind of strange since it's basically one of the only ones. Um, and then I described the ship of how it looked. Para's eyes get real wide, and he starts thinking he's, he knows the ship. Uh, this is the ship that he set the sails on fire. Absolutely nobody sees Zion's eyes going wide as well. All right, so you guys are walking along, and it's starting to get more and more crowded. There's people milling about. There's lots of people shouting at you to buy this or that. Kids come running up with handfuls of wooden beads, and it's like, hey, mister, hey, mister. There are three Kadarian soldiers coming straight towards you. Para is looking for a place to get new clothes and a place to get accessories, something that Zion can put on his face when he's not invisible anymore. So when he goes visible, he's going to need like glasses or something like on his head too. Roll perception. 17. You're looking around because you guys are walking. There's Kadarian soldiers about, I'd say maybe 10 seconds away from passing you guys or approaching you guys. They're kind of walking right towards you. But as you're looking off to the right, you're seeing several stalls. Like all, all, Much of the fabric here is silks and multicolored. There's a lot of, of drapery in how people dress. So there's tons of robes and togas and cloaks and things like that. There's also a lot of people have these kind of face chains on, both men and women. So there'd be like an opening for the eyes and these dangly little brass and gold and silver face chains. So you could easily get something like that. There's also scarves and head wraps and all sorts of different types of clothing you could buy for what you're looking for. I want to go into one of these shops. Are they shops or just like tables outside? So imagine it's open in the front. There's wooden structures along the back. You you guys have all been to like a, a swap meet, right? A farmer's market or something? They basically like set up shelves and the shelves form kind of like a horseshoe. Some of them are more intricate with larger areas, but you're kind of, you're kind of stepping into an area of shelves and all the items are on the inside, you know, but they can be seen from the outside as well to entice you in. Pear picks up something to cover his, his face with, uh, one of those beaded things. Ah, you have found one of the finest items I have. Hello, good sir. Uh, yes, hi. that would look wonderful upon you. Um, oh, have you seen some of the other ones? We have them in silver and gold, even platinum, my friend. No, no, that's that's a little too little too much um, for for us right now. 
from for me right now. Um, oh, are you buying it for a friend? Is this a present? Well, we do gift wrapping as well for a small fee. Uh, uh, he like looks around for like Zion. How much were you looking to spend, young man? Not, um, not, not a lot. And he kind of like reaches his hand back a little bit to see if he can like feel like Zion behind him. Are you near him? Yeah, of course. But like is the... um. <clears throat> But the spell doesn't break, like, if somebody accidentally grazes against me, right? We've just No, it that. wouldn't. Like, he could, like, kind of grab your cloak and know you were there. Right. Well, I make myself available for him to grab. It's the boyfriend exception. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so he, he would feel, like, a little tug on his robe. He looks behind him, and he doesn't see anything. So he assumes, like, that's Zion. I think he would like this one. He's waiting. He's, like, pausing for, like, a yes or a no tug. Two tugs, yes. One tug, no. <laughs> yeah, like something like that. <laughs> Describe the item you've picked out. First thing he picks up is one of those face covering things. That, one of those beaded metal chain face things. It's not like the best one there. It's like an off-brand metal face chain <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's one of the lesser metals. And because it's one of the lesser metals, maybe it's not made as well. And it's a little bit louder than the other one. Like when the guy showed me two of them, the, obviously the platinum one that he picked up was silent as the chains touched. And the bronze one makes a little bit more noise. And maybe that's what it is. It's got some gems embedded in it. But as you even you can tell, they're just colored glass. And it kind of jangles a bit. And he says, yes, well, I can see why that would. That's in the range, and he kind of looks you up and down, and he, said, he says, oh. yeah, I suppose that would be within your budget. Mm. Ten gold, my friend. Is that a lot? Yeah. Ten gold's a lot? For a piece of crap? Yeah. Okay. A piece of crap that I'm going to throw this is like, Okay. This isn't even like yeah. a Unfortunately, gold. like the, the ATM of Cyrena is no longer with us. Okay. So. Pear was raised poor, so Pear has an appreciation for a coin, and ten gold is a lot of money. You could buy a whole cow for ten gold. I imagine as he like stands there and like looks at the guy like, holy crap, 10 gold. He, he starts doing math in his head. Instead of seeing numbers, he sees like a bunch of cows. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like he sees like an entire Three barn. Three chickens and a goat. Yeah, an entire barn of cows and like horse. And then he sees himself standing there with like uh, 10 gold, like in a little pouch, like going, like handing it to someone else who's selling him a barn. And he like snaps back and he notices that like Zion's been tugging at his shirt, like, no, no, don't you dare. For you, my friend, you have such a kind face. I believe I'll give you a discount. Five gold for you, good friend. He like stares and he realizes he's in over his head on this. Like, how can this guy have the power to drop it from 10 to five? So he just like stares and he's like, Reno. <laughs> <laughs> Am I like, I'm probably like, I'm like looking at a different stall, but I'm like close. And it's just like, I hear Reno. And I'm like, <sighs> and then I walk over. Oh, that looks pretty good. Is this your girlfriend? What a pretty young thing. Yes, that would be a fine addition for her. Um, I am single. Thank you. Well, perhaps when you buy her this lovely gift, that may change. Para doesn't like this guy's attitude right now. <laughs> <laughs> you and your heteronormativity. So I, I look down at the thing and I go, ah, so like uh, five silver? We're, we're good? We're, we're good? Five silver? Oh, all right, all right. And I like pull it out and I like, I go like, oh, it's great. And I like open the guy hand and I like put it down in there. And I go, it's just, it, no, it's really good. All right. Come on, Para. We got to go. Okay. Thank you. You were, you were great. He grimaces, but he closes hands and he nods. Because he knows he still made a profit. <laughs> yeah, that was a piece of crap anyway. Yeah. Rena, that was awesome. That was great. How did you do that? No, he was an asshole. That's what that was. I was thinking that, but then I really wanted it. But then, oh man, I got to learn that. Yeah, it's uh, fast talking. They like to go really fast. You just kind of go back fast back at them usually. Go fast back at them. Yeah. Okay. We'll work on it. Okay. We'll work on it. No, yeah, I got it. He wants to try again so bad. Right <laughs> There's lots of other things to buy. You still need to buy clothing. Minor shopping. Minor shopping. Okay. Minor shopping. Minor shopping. He keeps his eyes peeled. Zion right now, while keeping quiet, he is uh, on the lookout for anybody with Seeker Stones that are trying to track them. Roll perception. I think that is a critical success. 
So you're just like silently scanning the crowd. And because you're invisible, you you don't mind just staring straight at people because you know that they can't see you. So you're able to really observe everyone around you. And the one thing that really piques your notice is you definitely spot a Kadarian patrol. Like there's like there's there's Kadarian soldiers everywhere, but they're all kind of lower rank for the most part. These guys aren't. There is an anti theot that you don't recognize, and he's surrounded by a couple soldiers, and then you hone in on one of them, the biggest one, and it's absolutely your brother, Tallis. And he barks a couple orders, six guards form up around him, and he, the anti theot and those six guards go marching further into the bazaar. Era's trying to talk someone down uh, on price, like talking really fast, but he's not talking about the thing he's buying at all. I was raised on a farm, and the thing about the chickens is you got to get really up really early to feed them, and oh boy, do they make a lot of noise. It's like, cows are tricky people too. Udders, have you ever squeezed an udder before? I'm trying to sell you a belt. <laughs> <laughs> and then he hears uh, Zion in his ear. Sparks, don't worry about that. Look, 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 look over there. Uh, he looks over there. You look in the exact wrong direction. Gently grab his head. The guy trying to sell me, all he sees is my neck go up a little bit, turn, and I'm making eye contact with the guy who was selling the entire time, and I'm just, like, staring at him, turning my head to the right, to the other side. And you see, like, the backs of some Kadarian soldiers, like in, the, like, like, in finer uniforms than the other ones you've seen, and they just kind of vanish all in formation further into the crowd. You know, we're doing a two-for-one sale right now, so if you buy one belt, you get a second belt free. Goats are people, too. Um, no, no, thank you, no. And he, like, turns back around, and he just starts talking to himself, and I guess they start walking the opposite direction, right? I just move up and move into, like, a formation, basically. Like a V? Are we doing, like, a V type thing? Okay. Real quick, what is Doro doing during this? Back to the star of the show! Uh, so I had obviously just gone into the marketplace, but the first thing I'm gonna do is fashion currency. So I go down an alleyway so no one can see me because I would like, and do you want me to roll hide? Don't roll hide because no one's looking for you. So it doesn't matter. I'm going into the alley and I'm looking for a stone, a rock. So yeah, you find a rock, just a generic rock. I reach into my belongings and I make the rock touch the sphere of Ogun. Oh, okay. So, like, you reach in and you press it against the sphere of Ogun for a moment. Even more so, I place the rock on top of it. I hold my stuff so it's just kind of laying in there, and I just put the rock on top of it without touching it. And kind of wrap the bag shut kind of tight so it presses against it. it. I watch it happen. Okay, so you open it up, and inside this bag is the perfectly spherical stone of Ogun, and it's just slowly rotating in the bag. It never stops moving. So you drop the rock on top, and it goes pink, pink, and kind of falls to the side, and then as the stone's rolling, it's kind of tumbling over and over, and as it's turning over, it slowly turns into... Garnet. Garnet. Garnet, thank you. It slowly turns into Garnet. About 30 seconds later, it's a little rock, exactly how it was formed of Garnet. <laughs> Simi precious stone. So I take out the Garnet and inspect it. And it's like polished, like almost like it's been rolled in a rock tumbler. Neat. Oh, actually, yeah, so it probably looks really cool. Now that I have my ruby. Garnet. Garnet. Still, <laughs> nice try. Still precious gem. Semi-precious, Joe. <laughs> okay, look, buddy. I know it's more than a freaking gold. No, it's a guarded, dude. You basically made, like, two silver. Okay, well, I've... I've do grab this another ten, rock. Yeah, I do this <laughs> ten times. There. So you grab a handful of rocks and pour them in. It's like... Shh, shh, During the entire time that they're doing this, it takes you about five minutes to make all these rocks, and you've got, like, 11 garnets by the time you're done. Now I'm going to use these garnets... To basically just get throwaway clothes. Uh, so, stuff to kind of hide me a little bit. I want to not disguise. That makes me sound like I'm running around with a fucking anonymous mask or something. But for 22, for 22 silver, you can outfit yourself with pretty much whatever you want. Just nothing too fancy. Exactly. I'm just traveler's garb or whatever. And maybe something put up so I can hide my face. With a couple silver left over. So what clothes did you buy? What are you wearing? Uh, let's say it was a... Be- oh, should it be... 
Should it be the clothes that I'm getting drawn in now? Yeah. So it's it's like performance pants. You know the pants that like Aladdin wears or something. Oh, those are uh, gaucho. Gaucho Is that pants. What yeah, gaucho. Like so, striped gaucho pants with like or a leather wait, belt. Hold on. I think gauchos don't taper off at the bottom. Like his taper off, right? They're, yeah, they're like sucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're like those. Ru- Maybe because it's like a Russian thing, right? I think so. They kind of yeah. look like what and they kick and they do yeah, all that they stuff. Do that. Yeah, yeah. I think um, they're gaucho. Well, I'm not positive though. Yeah. Oh, Michael's researching it. Yeah, I guess we have the internet. So I have... <laughs> <laughs> All things are known to us. <laughs> harem pants. They're called harem pants. Harem. That's okay. even better. Really? That sounds they're kinda... called harem pants. We don't have to call oh, them that no. in game, but they're called harem pants. So I'm wearing striped harem pants with leather belt, pinkish and purple like shirt tunic, and then over the top of it is like a half toga. Yeah, it goes over like the one shoulder. Yeah, just the one shoulder. Oh, definitely a cloak. So I can put a hood on. Let's say you got five silver left over. And then I look for them to return. So you rejoin the others. Are we all looking for clothes or are we okay wearing our clothes? No, we're looking for, we're looking we're looking for, for clothes. Because I'm, clothes. but just not over there near where my brother is. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I have like it's a, a big cloak market. over mine, but I have like my uh, like leaf oh, armor. Okay. Gotcha. So I can't be walking around in leaf armor because people are going to be like. It'd be a little obvious. Yeah. Or people recognize what elves. Not just wood elves, the guardians of the Ironwood. I mean, there are tales written and told about them, so someone might pick up on what she is. New cloaks and stuff. Stuff to put over my armor, basically, but still look okay. Okay, I would just like you all roll a perception. I rolled a 12. 18. Guys, I'm going to get the best clothes. 31. Okay, so Para, you find, you know roughly what you want and the guy's like trying to get you to buy it at full price so he wants you to pay a full gold for your outfit zion you find what you like and it's actually a pretty good deal so that guy wants you to pay five silver he doesn't for your want outfit. me to pay anything but i do tug on uh on para clothes like fall off the table <laughs> and he goes to like pick it up and like he can't for a second and then he realizes like oh i'm supposed to get these you know? <laughs> And then, Rena, you find this discount rack. Like, everything is cut to the bone. And there is this, go- whatever you want is there, and it's perfect. And it's definitely made out of, like, really fine silks. So, like, you're stunned. Maybe this was, like, last year's fashion or whatever, but you're stunned. It's such a good price. So you get a gorgeous outfit for two silver. Woo! What if this is the whole uh, episode? God's Fall goes to Target. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fans would love it. Starting with Para. Para, describe what you have bought. You know what? The outfit is actually very similar to what Zion is wearing in his Wanted poster, I think. Because he thinks that's cool. Like a, like a dark navy, because that's the official color of Kadar. So like, there's like dark but navy I'm a, robes. I'm an arch trader, too. Yeah, he's gotten new clothes since then. But that's what you're wearing in the picture, because that's how they would have drawn you. Do those clothes, are they just like normal clothes that you would see someone wearing around the city? True Kadar culture, it's very plain, very simple, very utilitarian. That's what he's doing, yeah. Well-made, heavy wools, but not a lot of embroidery or a lot of decoration. Yeah, I think he's doing something very simple, very much what he keeps seeing at every shop. His entire thing is just a blend in. I want another cloak just in case Para burns mine again. Also, I want like some nondescript clothes that I see other people wearing all around the marketplace. Sure. Maybe a, a hat of some sort. A wizard's hat? No. I want to get him a slouchy hat. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what did you pick out? The armor that's underneath, is it like go all the way down? Is it like a long sleeve? It stops right before the elbows because you need your hands free. And it's like a short tunic. So it would stop, I'd say, four inches above your knees. I'm going to go for more of like a still foresty colors, but like maybe have some other colors in there, like some other blues and things like that. I don't know the style of clothing. It's kind of like you look like combat clothing sort of kind of but like the casual wear of combat clothing casual combat (laughs) casual casual combat combat? that's what i want you guys want to punch right now i don't know (laughs) i don't know just keep it cash utilitarian like whatever the whatever the equivalent of a pair of cargo pants would be that kind of thing i want to say sort of like almost like a ninja versus like the monk kind of like where they have that kind of like robing kind of like combat gear like a fighter monk it's in this gorgeous midnight blue fabric. There's like these little threads of silver all cut throughout it that look like little points of stars. I run up as Hera's beginning to panic about a wallet. I see how much money he's getting out and the merchant is like smiling like 
Almost got the fish. So I come over to spoil the fun. Whoa! Whoa! whoa. How much are you going to pay for all this? What are you getting, like five of them? Who are you? It's a gold and a half. These are the finest a gold and a half. in you... all of Capenia. Is this magic too? That's amazing. I didn't know you could sell magic items in the bazaar. They would be the magic of the eyes of those who catch you. They are the magic of being finely dressed. Something I can understand that your kind wouldn't really know about, Halfling. <laughs> uh, clearly, you're trying to make him pay more for less. And here's what's going to actually happen. And I, like, put all the items out, like, so they're itemized in front of us. And I start, like, pointing and calling prices on stuff. Persuasion. I'm going to do that, and I'm totally going to lift one of the items. So I'm going to do that and sleight of hand. Probably a belt or some Slouchy hat, slouchy hat. Slouchy hat. Getting the slouchy hat. (laughs) 400,000. Oh, my God. That's so high. (laughs) Seventeen. He starts to argue with you for a little bit, but as you start piling up the garnets, acquiesces and he leans down and he starts like investigating one of the, he starts like really looking at one of the garnets closely to make sure it's real. While he's doing that, roll me a sleight of hand. 11. That's okay. I rolled a seven. (laughs) He's really staring at this thing closely. He's like, well, I suppose we, and then you just grab this like, several bands of color almost like a muted rainbow in this slouchy no we can't do that to him we can't give him a <laughs> rainbow <laughs> beanie no a no we, beanie. don't no. do this to me no we can't give him a rainbow one i think we're already pushing it with slouchy hat your friend's quite the bargainer anything else i could interest you in young man and para just feels a little defeated he was staring at Doro the entire time and how fast he was talking. <laughs> he was just like, where does everyone learn how to talk so fast? <laughs> like, he doesn't get it. He, like, looks down at the bag. No. Next time, though. And he, like, leans in. Next time. Not as, like, a, like a threat. Just as just, like, he's going to play. He's going to, yeah, he's going to play one day and he's going to win. Well, come, come again soon. <laughs> I'm just waiting for, like, when we're getting a meal in Paris. Like, I got this. I got this. <laughs> there is every type of food and delicacy you could imagine. I think we should get tons of, like, um, like dried meats and stuff. Things that we can take, take with us, you know, for a long period of time. Who knows how much longer we'll be gone. As you're looking around, there is an amazing spread of cheeses. Every type. <laughs> every kind. In fact, there's a big, huge wheel right out front where people are just carving slabs of this wonderful sharp cheddar off of it. Foul temptress! Well, actually, we don't really have time. We need to find. We need to find this woman. But you got your clothing now, and you got your face changed, and so you could change good. into. That's it. That's true. You duck into a place and change if you want. Help me find a place to hide. And Who keeps my talking? Who is that? Doro. What? Stop! Stop what? What do you? What, you know what this is? What? Oh right, it's Scion. <laughs> I remember now. If anyone can find a back alley, it's Doro. There and there and there, and there's one up there, and there's one down there, and if you go over there, turn the corner, there's one, and then you go over there, head to the right, talk to the dog, and then turn left, there's one there too! (laughs) Well, it works with Torvik, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I follow Doro to a nice secluded spot. I skip. (laughs) Put on my new clothes. I put my uh, old clothes back in my pack, and I put on my chained face and I dispel (gasps) I was a ghost oh right got it yeah (laughs) got it Pear is looking around for the pottery section of the bazaar roll me a perception roll 15 there's a woman walking towards you with a really fine clay pot I don't break away from the group but I train my eyes on her to see where she's going with that clay pot she uh, walks towards you smiling and looking at the pot and kind of like checking the bottom of it and then she kind of just quietly nods and she walks on past you. So she already bought the pot. Yeah, that's what he figures, that she already bought it and it's coming from that direction. Pottery's in that section over there, guys. We should probably head over there. Para's pointing exactly where your brother went. This might get hairy, folks. So I say, if it does, we meet back at the dock as soon as you can. The crowd is really getting thick in this area. You're working your way through, and now you're getting into much more of the 
finer crafted goods. There's woven, beautifully woven rugs, and there are wooden carvings and bone trinkets. And now you start to get towards the pottery area. And a lot of people have open wheels, and they're throwing these big pots, and there's huge kilns that are belching a smoke. And I would like perception rolls from everyone. 13. 14. 10. 22. I mean, there's a lot going on. Poor Paris got smoke in his eyes, and you're just you're just gonna. I have all his kinds eyes. of beaded shit all over <laughs> my eyes, right? Right. Now. You're still getting used to seeing through these waving chains, and Rena's a little bit. You know, you're not the best in the city. You're you're much better at noticing things in the in the forest. However, Doro hones in directly on it because Doro is incredibly used to being in an urban setting and watching for guards closing in. So you are like, you've like climbed up on top of one of these tables and you're just looking out and you spot several Kadarian soldiers like around a, a stall. So there's like one of these wooden stalls with shelves. There's all this gorgeous, gorgeous glazed pottery all up around it. And there are two Kadarian soldiers stationed just outside of it. There's two more a little bit further out. They're all got their hands on their swords looking around and you don't see his brother or the anti theot so you assume they're inside the stall. For my DM's notes on this and other adventures, head on over to Patreon and support God's Fall. We've got unedited episodes posted, as well as early releases of future episodes for all of our backers. And if you haven't picked up a God's Fall worldbook yet, you still have time to get a print copy. Check out worldbook.godsfall.com and reserve yours today. For more updates and information about the podcast, follow us on Twitter at God's Fall DC and our podcasting collective at Neon Rivals. We are currently exploring the jungles of Chult as we run through the Tomb of Annihilation. For full episodes, check out NeonRival.com and we'll see you next time for more adventures in the Five Kingdoms. Thank you.